Hello, welcome to Worship in the Word Season 2. <laughs> I say that because we're now in our new location and uh, here in Maurice, Louisiana instead of Justin, Texas. And this is our first night of a, a regular broadcast. It's going to be on Tuesday nights now. And I hadn't changed the banner at the end of the broadcast, so I'll have to do that later. I forgot. And no, Debbie and I didn't have a fight beforehand. So I'm trying to hide her face. <laughs> uh, we're cramped in this tiny little room like a can of sardines. So we're still in the process of putting things where they need to be. I thought I had it all set up, you know, camera-wise and all, until she walked in, then we realized that the mic was covering her face. So I've tried That's to just fine with me. I'd, be, I'd prefer to be <laughs> But I'll readjust it before next time. I promise. <laughs> We'll start off with a few of her songs. If anybody's joining us that doesn't know these songs, first couple of songs that she's written. Jesus. 
comprehend that because our love is conditional for example in a husband and wife relationship you know we are we're the bride of Christ we're betrothed to him so you can look at a husband and wife relationship that's a godly relationship and you're faithful, you've got commitments, but <laughs> if you make comments like, well, me and my husband never fight, um, you probably need to repent because no relationship is perfect. And sometimes we like our spouses. Sometimes we love our spouses. Sometimes we love our spouses, but we don't like them. 
at that time because they've made us mad for getting our clean floor dirty or leaving dirty clothes on the floor that you just got through washing or something they've done that has angered you or um, <laughs> you do something on the phone and it causes their phone to blow up with phone calls because mm -hmm. you didn't check off a box. So they're calling him and bugging him for something that you've done. That happened to us uh, recently. <laughs> but I didn't get mad. Right? Right. right. He didn't. Did. Mad. He did. But in relationships, I don't care if it's husband and wife. I don't care if it's parent child. I don't care if it's grandparent, grandchild. Whatever relationship you're in with whomever, best friends, people are going to let you down because people are people. We're not perfect. We live in an imperfect world. And although you love that person, you don't like them very much at that particular time. So our love is conditional. It really is. And we can't wrap our mind around the unconditional love of God. But God's love is unconditional. And even in times when you go through things and God didn't come through like you wanted him to or like you expected him to or you go through church like we've gone through all of our lives and you name it and you claim it and it still doesn't happen and you quote the word and stand on the word and you blow and, and declare and it still doesn't happen and you find yourselves going God I'm doing everything I know to do and you're still not coming through and your word says and you start using the Bible as you're complaining to God you're fussing at him and he's perfect and his love is unconditional where it's it's our fault whatever happens maybe you're praying out of an impure heart maybe you're I don't, you know, there's millions of reasons. And sometimes God loves us enough to say no. And we just have to take that. But we can always, even in times of uncertainty, we can always crawl, crawl up in his lap and sit at his feet or wrap up in his blanket of love. Because that blanket of love is always there. No matter what we do, no matter how bad we mess up, no matter what we've done wrong, that blanket of love is always there, ready to receive us. And one of the things that we've been through since we were last on the air, you know, I had the stroke back in January, and it, God is still bringing me out of that. And it got to the point that there were times that I couldn't play the piano. I, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember my the songs that I've written. I couldn't remember how to play them. I couldn't remember the tunes. I couldn't remember the words. Things that I had written that were part of me, that came forth from me, I couldn't remember. All the healing scriptures, and I would... I would pull healing scriptures out of the Bible and I'd stand on them and I'd quote them and I'd cry and I'd stomp and it didn't work. Nothing I did worked. And the only time I could find peace in the midst of all that, we'd put on some praise and worship music and I would just sit at the Father's feet. And there were times I was so mad at God and so angry and so hurt that I didn't have any words. But you know what? God didn't judge me on that. And the blanket of love wrapped around me. And I'm in the, in the process of going through healing. Perhaps you've been through something that 
God didn't bring you through like you thought he would or, or, or according to the word of God and what you've been taught. He should have come to your rescue and he didn't. And you're disappointed, you're mad, you're angry. Maybe you're still walking through that. Rather than pitching a fit and quoting scripture and standing on scripture like we've been taught to do in the Christendom church, the, you know, the believers, the bride of Christ, we have these rights, we have this authority, we, we yeah, all the, all the scriptures. Quiet your heart, quiet your soul, put on some praise and worship music, and just sit at his feet. You don't have to say a word, you don't have to sing, you don't have to hum, just listen and sit at his feet and you will feel his blanket of love surround you. And that may be the only time and the only way you can get some peace. We're experiencing, a, it's like we're going through a training process. And he, and he says, I love you. And he wraps that blanket of love around us. Even though we're, we might be kicking and screaming in his lap because he didn't come through with what we thought he should come through with. He wraps that blanket of love around us and he just holds us. Because that blanket of love will never judge. That blanket of love will always be open for his children. So just think about God's big blanket of love that he has for us to run into it might not be a bad idea to read Psalm 91 in the midst of that because that that psalm talks about the protection like a mother chicken in the in the hen yard when she's got babies out there and there's danger coming. She'll raise up her arms, her, the feathers of her, of her wings, and all those baby chickens will run under those wings and they're protected. And that's what Psalms 91 talks about is, is God's protection. Um, that's not something that, that's not a, a sword that we can point at God and say, your word says, and then start quoting it because that's the wrong spirit. But just sit at his feet and read Psalm 91. Listen to praise and worship music and just get still before him. That's what I've learned to do. And healing is taking place. Not, not by what I've said, not by anything I have said, but just because my daddy loves me. And there's a lot of times that he does things in his own time, in his own way. And we can kick and scream and sneeze and snot and cry and wave our fist at him and let him know how mad we are. And I'm just being honest because I know every one of us have done it. If you haven't, you will. Because those happen in relationships. But he has unconditional love. He loves you. I just want to add one thing to that before we sing. If you're not in a body, you might have to consider getting there. What do I mean by that? Well, COVID, unfortunately, forced a lot of churches to only have church online. And I'm glad that we had that when there was nothing else. And it did open the door for us to hear a lot of other ministries that we wouldn't have otherwise heard. But when you're going through these hard times like we have, none of us, not only are we not perfect, none of us, I don't care who you are, hear from God perfectly all the time. God ordained us, it's in his word, to be part of a body it says when you come together, one has a psalm, one has a hymn, one has a spiritual song. And we're supposed to, if you read 1 Corinthians 14, 
use the gifts that God gives us to build up one another in love. And sometimes when I'm down and I'm struggling, I need a body that I can be honest with and say, hey guys, this is what's going on. I need you to pray for me. Not to condemn you, but if you're just watching church online still, you're missing out. And thank God we found that in a local church. Amen. Amen. You know, we're like God's, we're his, literally his body. And when we're going through things, we need flesh and blood bodies to sometimes just grab a hold of us and give us a hug and love on us. You can't do that when you're sitting on the couch at home. Sometimes you need flesh and blood to, to talk to, to, to love on, to have them love you back. local body is necessary. I will raise you. You are the one that I adore. Lord, I love Sometimes his, sometimes his answer is no. Sometimes it's not yet. Sometimes it's soon. But he always answers. The problem is, do we like what he has to say? He always answers. Yeah. 
your presence is where I want to be. As I come into your presence, I find peace and I fall.
you, Lord, for your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. That reminds me of a good song. Try this one. Jesus, you, you're my king, you're my king, Lamb of God, you're my sin offering. There is none who would die for my gain. You alone made the selfless exchange. For your love will never fail. Your love will never fail. Now and evermore I say, You are my righteousness. My life is in your hands, in your hands. Now and I am forgiven much Your mercy knows no end Knows no end Knows no end I declare You're my God You're my God You removed all my fears, all my doubts At the cross, there your will is revealed Every, Every sickness and pain you have healed For your love will never Your mercy knows no end, knows no end, knows no end. Let's try the first verse again. Jesus, you're my king, you're my sin offering. Jesus, you are my king, you're my king. Lamb of God, you're my sin offering. There is none who would die for my gain. You alone made the selfless exchange. For your love will never fail. Your love will never fail. Now and evermore I say, you are my righteousness. My life is in your hands, in your hands. Now and evermore I say, I am forgiven much. Your mercy knows no end, knows no end. Now and evermore I say, you are my righteousness. My life is in your hand, in your hands. Your mercy knows no end, knows no end, knows no end. Oh, we thank you, Lord. And what does it mean? That he is our righteousness. First off, scripture says that. But if it just becomes a religious quote, it's not doing us a lot of good, really. And this is an original. Somebody 
gave this. I heard somebody. I don't know if you can see that. It says, Righteousness is the ability to stand in God's presence without sense of guilt or fear or inferiority. That's not the only definition, but I like this one. The ability to stand in God's presence without sense of guilt or fear. Inferiority. Why? Because we're perfect? No. Because we're forgiven. And He is our righteousness. There's a third verse on this that I forgot about, so let's try that. (laughs) Lord, I call on your name, on your name. You've removed all my sins, all my shame. By your grace, in your arms, I am found. Dearly loved, when the goodness I'm proud. For your love will never Mercy knows no end, knows no end. Now and evermore I say, You are my righteousness, my life is in your hands, in your hands. Now and evermore I say, I am forgiven much, your mercy knows no end, knows no end, knows no end. song that I believe comes out of Lamentation and says in the change key the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases His mercy again. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. They are
is all I see. In the glory of your majesty, I bow my knee, I bow my knee to worship you. Song 
amazing grace for Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay he paid a debt he did not owe I owed a debt I could not pay I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, amazing grace. For Jesus paid a debt that I could never Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for paying that debt. You took the fall for my sin, rendered me blameless through death, bringing peace through your Tore down the strongholds of fear Healing the darkness within All that's broken Made whole Your goodness You never hold back Jesus You're more than enough Provided and I shall receive it. Let not my heart be afraid. In every season of need, I shall see my supply. Jesus, you're my supply. Jesus, my fountain of life. The wellspring that never runs dry, I will drink of your love. Here I will lift up my hands, sing of your mercies again, all I have is in. Provided and I shall receive it. Let not my heart be afraid. In every season of need, I shall see my supply. Jesus shall my supply. You're our supply, God. Lord, you supplied us with righteousness, with healing, and most importantly, the ability to come into your presence without shame, reproach, regret, because we stand in your righteousness, not our own, Lord. You have provided, and I shall receive it, let not my heart be afraid. In every season I meet, I shall see my supply. Jesus, you're my
be our closing, we'll see. I simply receive. 
so simple and thank you Lord that it's not based on our performance or lack of it because we could never earn more love and we could never do anything to make you love us less we just have to simply receive First of all, how much you've loved us, that it may cause our hearts to yearn again, where we become cold or callous, Lord. Let your love melt our hearts and draw us closer to you. And remind us who we are in Christ, that we may be able to stand against everything that comes against us. For we know that your word says that you are good. And more particularly, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So we know you don't change, Father. You're not good one day and bad the next. And your word says in Hebrews, not Hebrews, Isaiah 54, that because of the blood you'll never be mad at us again. If we're in Christ, we become new creations, and all our sins are covered. Lord, forgive us where we failed you, where our hearts have become weak, and where we become discouraged and 
Cause us to turn our eyes again on you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for joining us. And uh, hopefully next week, maybe we'll have a few more people because <laughs> I know nobody knew that this would be the first Tuesday night. Thanks but, for joining us, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hopefully some will watch it after the fact, and I will post this on YouTube so anybody can watch it later if you want to share that link with somebody. So bye, be blessed, and don't, don't forget, he loves you. And we are his righteousness, and we're complete in him. Amen? Amen.